nothing should be exclusive. Everyone should have an opportunity to drink from the same fountain. Mm. We're living in 2016, a time where Kanye West is a designer and our fashion industry is worth 26 billion pounds. With design houses like Vetements following suit, Logomania seems to be on the rise. But why are we paying so much for these labels? We thought we'd start by chatting with self-proclaimed Logomaniac Mo Gates. But how much are your balances on? Oh, I'm not even going to... Should I do? Should I do? 355. <laughs> but I'm not even going to lie. I get a lot of looks like, oh, look at his kicks and that, and then... A lot of people start hating, but they don't know that I work my ass off to cut these, you know. I prefer this stuff to the old stuff because I used to be wearing Primark and stuff now. Mm. And it's upgraded a bit, you know. The thing is, one thing about this Tommy is, yeah, not a lot of people got it because it was so exclusive. Mm. I haven't really seen no one wear this one. I've seen Chris Brown wear the grey one, but I got yeah, the grey yeah. one too. <laughs> Why do you feel you need to keep constantly buying? trainers over and over again you've got countless amounts of air forces the same ones we've got the same air forces yeah, we've got home. the same ones why do you feel you need to go out and buy the brand new air forces think about it when we was wearing them years ago we had like bright pink on the sides we can't work, we can't rock those no more you know what i'm saying those yeah, are out true. of style now some things i have to buy if they're fresh like it depends on on the season or whatever yeah. So it seems making sure you're looking fresh is the goal. One brand in particular that uses this to its advantage is Supreme, a skate shop that has escalated to the point where its pieces have become collected like modern art, including the infamous Supreme brick, a classic red clay brick with a Supreme logo engraved into it, retailing at roughly 40 pounds. Don't worry, we're confused too. As they're known for their small weekly releases, we thought we'd go down to Supreme's London store in Soho and ask some of the eagerly waiting fans why they're lining up to cop the next drop. But that was soon shut down by security in the line. Not speaking. And most people denied our request for a quick chat about what they'd just grabbed from the store. <laughs> this made us question, what's so exclusive? We decided to talk to fashion designer and tutor Ricky Harriet to see if he could give us an insight into the exclusivity of brand culture. Could you introduce yourself for us again? Cool. Uh, my name's Ricky Harriet. I'm a fashion designer and fashion tutor. I got into Supreme possibly about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I find Supreme kind of, with brands like Supreme, you can take a piece and mix it in with older things. And mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It like yeah. it merges into uh, other brands quite nicely. One of the one of the things Supreme brought out recently, mm. which was the brick. Mm. What's your whole take on that? I think it's I think it's nonsense. I think the jokes on the consumer. Mm. I in my mind, there's like twenty guys sitting in an office in New York laughing, like yeah. laughing. I mean, come on, like they've achieved so much notoriety that people queued up for a brick. Like, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I think. All brands and designers, our job is to manipulate a client into wanting our product. We do it through clever design or we do it through clever marketing. Supreme are genius at creating desire. You see it more than you actually get to touch it. Yeah. And I think just by having that level of you can't have us, they create crazy demand. But products that are popular but not accessible is nothing the world hasn't seen before. Women I've always admired when it comes to style in the face of adversity are my mum and my auntie Wendy, especially when I see their personal style in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, you Dr. Martin's, the punk hero, it was all, it was a good yeah, time because really you had an eclectic time. mix. Yeah. But I think brand awareness back then wasn't as high. I, I had ideas of like Kenzo, those kind of designers, but to own a piece, no. To even buy fabric was out of my price range. I had a really, really lovely black and white Chanel suit and sort of like paying, you know, £39 for it in a second hand shop it just wasn't the thing that you, d you, no. you did back then. I could never ever have even dreamt of going into an, an outlet or into the Chanel store because I knew that, you know, as a little black girl, they would just look at me like I was a piece of... Mm -mm. No, and it really was different. Yeah. I mean, I always say in, in our quest to look different, we've never looked so much alike. Mm. <laughs> so whether it be to show wealth or fit in with your friends or even as a collectible, brands will never be out of loyal customers lining up to cop the next drop. But if you didn't get it this time, don't worry. There are always Boxing Day sales to look forward to.